So now that we understand more about MIDI uh, and types of MIDI devices, I want to delve into some details of the MIDI specification, uh, the actual data and messages that are getting sent uh, uh, over MIDI. Uh, and, and we're going to take two videos to cover this. In, in this first part, we're going to talk about MIDI ports and channels and some basic types of MIDI messages. In the second part, we'll talk about general MIDI and standard MIDI files. Um, I, I want to emphasize I'm not covering the entire MIDI specification uh, in this course. I'm just trying to hit on some of the most important highlights that are relevant to the work that we're doing here. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with uh, MIDI ports. Uh, you probably noticed when I was uh, holding up my MIDI keyboard controller uh, and my MIDI interface in the last video, uh, there was more than one MIDI port on both of those devices. Uh, and there's actually three different kinds of MIDI ports, in, out, and through. Uh, and, and the reason for this is that uh, uh, MIDI ports can actually only send or receive data in a single direction. So if I have a, a controller of some sort here, um, and it has an in and an out port on it, and I have uh, some kind of sound module here, um, and it has an in and an out port on it. Um, if I want to send from the controller to the sound module, I have to go from out to in. If I want to send from the sound module back to the controller for some reason, I have to go out to in like that. Um, so then you might be asking what, what this through is about. Um, and not every device has one, um, but the reason for it is pretty simple. If you can remember back to that, that picture of the, the, the rack I showed in the last couple of videos where there was this one uh, keyboard controller and, and a ton of different sound modules that were hooked up to that uh, keyboard controller, uh, it's not obvious from, from this kind of layout how we would actually hook up another sound module if I had sound module S2. Um, because my, my, my ports are already all used up. I have no way to hook up another import from my controller uh, over to the in port on there. Um, so what I do instead is I hook up the through port from the first sound module to the in port of the second sound module. And what that through port does is it basically just replicates whatever is coming into that sound module and sends it back out uh, its through port. So that way the controller is going from its out to, uh, to the in here, and then it's going from the through over to the in here. And then I could use this through to go to another device and so on and so on and so forth. Um, so that's why we have these different ports. Um, it also explains a little bit of why we have these different channels uh, in MIDI. You can send data, uh, data on, on any of 16 different channels. And th the reason for that is, uh, again, think about this scenario here where I'm playing a note on this controller here. And uh, uh, I don't necessarily want all three of these sound modules to be playing it back. Uh, I want uh, maybe just S1 to play some of the notes, and only S2 to play others, and only S3 to play others. Um, so uh, if I set up S1 to respond, say, on channel 1, and S2 to respond on channel 2, and S3 to respond on channel 3, um, then whenever uh, I send on channel 1 from my controller, I know I'll only be controlling S1. S2 and S3 will uh, receive the messages, but they'll ignore them. Uh, and same thing when I send out on channel 2, only S2 will be responding. Uh, and so on and so forth, because I, 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 I'm mapping these channels to different devices. Uh, and uh, this is particularly useful with uh, MIDI sequencers, where you might have 16 different tracks and you want a different sound on each one. You might want uh, a different sound module to respond to each one. Uh, so you can configure uh, each track to send out on a different channel. Uh, there's also uh, uh, devices uh, that they're called multi-timbral uh, multi devices. And these days, pretty much every MIDI device is, is multi-timbral, where it can respond on all 16 channels, but it can load a different sound on each of them. So that way, even with a single device, um, if I'm sending on channel 1, I could say, well, I wanted to play a trumpet sound. On channel 2, I wanted to play uh, a piano sound. On channel 3, I wanted to play uh, a violin sound, and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so let's delve into detail now and talk about the actual messages that are going across these ports. Um, the most uh, common message across MIDI uh, is a note on and, and a corresponding note off message. Um, and there's three pieces of information that go out with each of these. Um, we get uh, a note number, and in MIDI, uh, note numbers are uh, expressed as a number between 0 and 127. It's just an indication of what pitch is being played, uh, what key on a keyboard or, or the equivalent uh, is being played. Uh, middle C, C4, is defined as MIDI note number 60, um, this, uh, this middle C on the keyboard. Uh, and then, so if I were to go to the C sharp here, that would be uh, 61, uh, uh, 62 would be the D, uh, 63 would be uh, the D sharp, and, and so on and so on and so forth. Um, uh, these numbers, you'll see a lot of numbers in MIDI go from 0 to 127 because 7 uh, 
a binary digits, seven bits, are, are, are being used to represent a, a, a lot of MIDI values. Um, uh, velocity is uh, uh, how hard we're uh, hitting the note, uh, like how hard we're, we're, we're pressing the key on the MIDI keyboard. 127 would be the hardest, uh, one would be the softest, and then zero would correspond to a note off message, because uh, uh, zero, no velocity. Uh, it, it's like I'm lifting up the key. Uh, and then, of course, uh, what channel we're going to be on. Uh, I want to show you how this works uh, in Reaper and, and let you actually see the messages coming in as I, I hit notes uh, on the MIDI keyboard now. So here we are in Reaper, uh, and I'm going to just hit uh, a note on uh, my MIDI controller keyboard now. And then I'll let go. Uh, and you can see here uh, that we got uh, information here in this, this log over here uh, about the channel it was sent on, channel 1, uh, the note number, middle C, note 60, uh, and then the attack velocity, uh, 92. Uh, and if I hit different keys, uh, you'll see how that goes through a C sharp, a 61, uh, a D, 62, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, let me go ahead and clear that view. Uh, and we'll go back to the slide stack now. So uh, one limitation of MIDI note on messages is that we just have one piece of information to describe uh, what happens during that note. Uh, that's how hard we're hitting it. There may be lots of other things that happen over the course of playing a note uh, besides just how hard we hit it. Uh, if uh, we're trying to represent a string player uh, with MIDI, um, they may have a crescendo uh, over the course of the note. Uh, we don't have a way to represent that with a MIDI note message. Um, there may be uh, some vibrato added to the note. Uh, we don't have a way to represent that in a note uh, on message. Uh, all kinds of different things like that. Uh, and so there, there are a number of different kinds of messages in MIDI that try to represent these other kinds of uh, pieces of information about how notes are played. Uh, control change messages are, are one of the most powerful and most flexible. So I just want to show you how these work really quickly. Um, we uh, uh, have a, a couple of important pieces of, of information besides the MIDI channel. We'll have a control number, which describes what is it that we're changing, and then a value uh, that we're changing it to. Again, a number between 0 and 127. Uh, now, the MIDI specification defines what certain uh, controller, uh, control change numbers are by convention. So uh, number one uh, is a modulation wheel, uh, so how much vibrato there is typically. Number two is a breath controller, like on that uh, electronic wind instrument that we saw in the last video. Uh, channel seven, uh, control change seven, I'm sorry, is uh, the volume on the channel. Uh, 10 is panning. Uh, and 64 is whether a sustained pedal is on uh, with a value of 127 or off with a value of zero. And there's some others that are defined uh, that are uh, somewhat more uh, obscure. Uh, and then there are a number which are, are not defined at all, uh, but can be used for, for basically any purpose, as long as uh, the MIDI devices that are, uh, are communicating these messages uh, agree with each other on what that purpose uh, might be. Uh, so let me show you these control change messages in Reaper now. OK, we're here in Reaper now. And uh, on my MIDI control keyboard, I have a, a number of uh, knobs that I can uh, use that actually send out particular uh, MIDI control change messages. Uh, so I'll turn this one, and you can see uh, as I turn it up, the, the value is going up uh, a little by little, showing it's on channel 1, and the control change number is 84. Uh, the MIDI specification doesn't define 84, so it just lists none there. If I move a different one, uh, we'll see this is control change 93. Um, and that is defined by the MIDI specification as chorus level, so maybe the amount of a chorus effect that's applied on a particular channel uh, uh, might be how that's interpreted. I can also move the modulation wheel, uh, and that sends mod wheel control change one, uh, just like we, we, we looked at on the slide. So uh, pitch bend actually gets its own uh, MIDI message. Uh, it's not a control change uh, number. And uh, uh, because of that, it's actually able to use uh, uh, more bits to encode the pitch bend value. So it goes from 0 to 16,000 or so, uh, rather than 0 to 127. And then, of course, we tell it what channel it's going to be on. Um, so uh, again, let me just uh, uh, show this to you. OK, so if I uh, play a note like a middle C and then adjust the pitch bend, you'll hear it go up and then down below the original. Um, and you can see here, it's actually showing you uh, the two different uh, sets of bits that are being used to, uh, to encode that number between 0 and, uh, and about 60,000. Now, you would think that pitch bend was something uh, that's really standardized across devices, um, that uh, is, is pretty clear what it's supposed to represent. Uh, but it's not, unfortunately. 
Uh, and the, the place where there tends to be the most disagreement is, is how much does the pitch bend up or down? Um, so, uh, you know, what does 16,383 mean? Does it mean that I've uh, in, increased the pitch uh, one semitone up from the original, so like from a C to a C sharp? Uh, two semitones from like a C to a D, uh, an octave from a C to the next C above that. Um, different devices have different ideas about what this means. And, and actually, a lot of devices allow you to configure this uh, when you kind of edit their configuration. How much uh, does pitch bend increase and decrease pitch? Uh, so it's another example about how all the many devices that are, are communicating these messages need to be in agreement about what they actually mean uh, in specific. Uh, the final uh, type of... Uh, a message I want to talk about is a program change message. Um, so again, you send this on a particular channel and you send a program change, which is a number between 0 and 127. So when I send out, this is essentially instructing a particular sound module to load a particular sound on that channel. So uh, program 0 might be a grand piano, uh, program uh, 13 might be a French horn, program uh, 90 might be an electric guitar, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and so uh, this is particularly useful with MIDI sequencers, where uh, you might have 16 different tracks that are each trying to play a different sound. Uh, and so at the very beginning of those tracks, they can send out a MIDI uh, program change message to load the appropriate sound on the appropriate channel. Uh, but again, uh, I, I, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself here, uh, but I think it's a really important point. There has to be some agreement uh, between the sequencer or whatever device is sending out these program change messages and the sound module or whatever is receiving them uh, in terms of what these mean, because otherwise the sequencer might send out program change zero and think it's getting a grand piano. The sound module might receive program change zero and load uh, a ukulele sound. Um, and obviously the, result, uh, the resulting music is going to sound uh, very different uh, if there's not agreement there. Uh, and this actually leads into what uh, we're going to start the next video with. Uh, so in this video we obviously talked about MIDI channels and ports and types of MIDI messages. Um, but we're going to look at this problem of consistency across devices in the, the next video and, and talk about how this led to the development of the general MIDI uh, extension to the MIDI specification. And we'll also talk about standard MIDI files and, and, and how they work, because this is a common way that sequencers use uh, to uh, encode and exchange uh, 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 sequence files with each other.